All right, guys. It was a hot, sticky, miserable day here in the second collapse of global industrial civilization down here in the former Maya village. I don't know if this was a village or a big city, Chulha, Mexico, here on this uh, sticky Sunday, February 19th, 2023. And I keep trying to go... Uh, for a swim, but now it looks like the rain might be moving in, so I'm gonna sit here and procrastinate for a few minutes and bring you uh, a second chronicle of the collapse. Uh, but since it's Sunday, I'm gonna call this more of a sermon, more of a Sunday sermon, uh, which I found here on medium.com this morning. Uh, I'm not going to read uh, the whole thing. I'm going to do kind of a mashup <coughs> of it uh, and look at the bigger picture. But uh, as some of you might know, I found out yesterday uh, that, that my dear sweet ex-wife died almost eight years ago at age 55. I have no idea what the woman died of, but it's, I, I just found out, got the news yesterday, you, you know, that, the, uh, that this uh, woman who was the center of my life for about 10 years uh, dropped dead for some reason uh, almost eight years ago, and so, uh, I've been thinking uh, a lot about death uh, of, you know, friends and people you used to know and uh, whatnot. And I wake up this morning and here is this uh, essay by this woman named Mary McCarthy, never heard of her, called Living in a Time of Death. Well, you know, this isn't this long. I, was, uh, I wasn't going to read the whole thing, but I see it's, it's really not that long, so I'm just going to read it all together so it won't sound too mashed up. And um, she starts off with a quote from Buddha. There are only two mistakes one can make on the road to truth not going all the way and not starting. Yeah, once you start on the road to truth, uh, you just gotta go all the way. <clears throat> and this is why 99% of people who get on this road to truth uh, hop off. All right, take it away, Mary. <clears throat> we live in a time of dying you may have already figured this out. While it is important that this is true, how we deal with it is more crucial. It is not that death is just now happening or that nothing lasts forever. It is how we meet this fact of death, embrace it, and learn from impermanence what is most important. Yes, game over, you're dead. Game over, you're dead. This morning, just before dawn, a friend of mine died. She snuck out when no friends or family were present, dying alone, or at least when no one close is present, is quite usual. Contrary to the television portrayals of death, most people do not die with company. They prefer the solitary exit. So she did this, and just before dawn, she flew off. She was a lovely woman, kind, talented, and curious. She rescued dogs, taking the little ones to foster the foo-foos, as she called them, she saved them from dying in the streets in pain and hungry. Three weeks ago, 
she told me she did not think she would be around for long. She was correct. She and I had often talked about the climate crisis and the political disaster in the U.S. We knew the end was near with these situations as well. But remember, it is not that we know the end is near, but what we do about it that counts. <coughs> Perhaps all of us sense when our end is imminent. Her family took all the actions that we do when we hope someone can return to us. They arrived at the hospital with little preparation concerning what they would see. They had no idea how sick she was until they walked into the room. Her choice was to play her final cards close to her chest. She did not want to burden anyone, and to the end, she continued to rescue dogs. You know, I'm sure you've heard uh, my favorite t tombstone uh, in history. I think this tombstone is in Key West. I told you I was sick. <coughs> you know, I, so I hope I'm not going to be plagiarizing on my, that is the single greatest tombstone ever written. I told you I was sick. Anyway, <clears throat> getting back to being serious. Years ago, I spoke with a friend who does not believe in either heaven or hell. She said that in her belief, it was how you lived your life that mattered. You lived your life with the awareness of being in service to your community, to the family of the world. <clears throat> you did not do this to get to heaven, but simply to be a good person while alive. That's it. No other drama. I believe my friend did this. She did not want a priest or minister in the end. She was okay with how she was. <clears throat> so, why are we all living in a time of death? I do not say this as a statement of my loss, but as a witness to the loss of my world. The human world is dying. Yes, we have always been dying, sometimes in huge numbers, but this time it is not a localized plague or a battle that involves an entire continent, but the death of the biosphere that supports life. To be clear, I don't think the planet will stop and all life will cease. If Putin releases the nukes and Biden does as well, then yes, most of life will end. But I'm not talking about this. My belief that we live in a time of great death is about the massive assaults on planetary life we are currently experiencing. I don't address this comment to those still denying this reality, but to those who know climate disaster is looming and will likely take us the humans out in 10 to 50 years. According to the Hopis, we are now living in the fourth world, the world of humans having died out in one catastrophe or another three times previously. This belief lines up with the archaeological evidence of the vanishing of cultures worldwide, primarily due to exceeding the carrying capacity of their particular areas. The Mayans, hmm, the Mayans, <coughs> the Easter Islanders, and many other cultures died out as complex societies 
due to the overuse of their resources, America should be paying attention. They are not. Our situation as a planet is similar to the dying out of these advanced cultures hundreds of years ago, only now we can end all cultures in a slowly spiraling die out across the globe with no culture or areas spared. Yes, a few humans and tribes will survive, and I think that is a fine idea, provided we learn the lesson. I won't survive. I am old, don't run fast, and live in a dry place. Most likely there will be no water, but some will survive, and though it may take millions of years, the planet, uh, hopefully, will heal itself. What is the lesson of living in a time of mass die-offs? Live your life well, do what is most important to you, and contribute your energy, kindness, and intelligence. If you paint, paint. If you rescue dogs, rescue dogs. If you are the chronicler of the collapse of civilization and a planet, then keep chronicling the collapse of civilization and the planet. That was kind of my last sentence, but I think she would be okay with it. Do something meaningful to yourself and others. Don't ignore the crisis and don't waste your time being angry or sulking. Act in your world. Do something for the good of the world. And while you are doing this, notice how marvelous the beauty of this world is. See the beauty of the ones you care about and celebrate this. As you would want to do with a dying friend, pay witness, help where and how you can. Don't run away from death. Give comfort and while there is any chance of your friend living, fight like hell to keep her alive. When it is time to let go, when you understand there is nothing left to do and that she will not survive, offer comfort. Well, I say I was going to go celebrate the beauty of Laguna Azul, which the collapsed Mayans were doing here a few hundred years ago, but uh, with this storm rolling in, maybe I will go uh, celebrate the beauty of a coconut while I still can. My gosh.